Hello guys and welcome to my new video about Inktober and I realize I have some very useful pointers on how I did it, what did I came up with, how did I plan everything and I turned my uh, script, I made a script <laughs> spontaneously I turned uh, what I want to talk about into sections and the sections are tools and functionality planning and thinking how to start F number four improve on the go five enjoy the process six final thoughts and corrections seven turning into a product and eight summary so yeah I'm assuming this will be a longer video so if you don't want to watch um, me um, like time lapses of me inking anything or like doing whatever afterwards with it to make a product just uh, sit by have some coffee or tea and uh, yeah you can <laughs> just do your illustration work or whatever or if you're still working on October uh, drawings I would love to hear about that so please um, yeah join me so number one, tools and functionality. I explained in my previous video that I was like trying to forgive, forgive myself and forget about doing October this year. And I explained it kind of in details in previous video. And yet I was so driven. I was so, I had a creative rush to do anything that has to do with ink. As I always do, you know, as I left my you know abandoned my big plans for literally doing a 16 double pages i just realized that come on what could i do I, I i could do something you know i could just take one day and do 31 days uh challenge into one day like 12 15 16 however hours i need uh no matter how much hours i need in one day and just just do something that is like within that number and that it, that is in ink and it has something like a concept behind it something that I will follow from beginning to the end and it will be a series of ink drawings so yeah well, whatever um I thought about I was like torturing myself for like few days and plus I was um sick at a time very sick so i had a lot of time with high temperature to think about it i was really tor torturing myself on top of it and i said to myself there's got to be some way so number one tools and functionality what did i do i just said to myself okay this will be this can be like done only with you know like less less tools i, I usually use two three four different um, sensibilities of brush pens i uh even though there are brush pens they already have some kind of uh um with uh, line range which is satisfying so i said okay i would just use my copy copy gasafunda that i mentioned in my illustration date uh, sketchy date video um when I was opening my pencil case and I would just uh, try to sketch everything so fast and what I wanted to do okay so as I'm developing Beggy Bird um, concept as a brand you know the branding I did a lot of stickers over last like nine or ten months or so so come on it could be a sticker right I, I, it wasn't satisfying i was just like no that's not it's not it's not nice enough it's not neat enough yet it was like okay i can just as uh, it's a travel inspired brand i can just um do some uh, functional ink drawings that will turn into stickers afterwards but what to do come on let's how to spread some simple simple concept and doing simple kind of illustrations so small dimensions and turn them into something funny and interesting and meaningful and the functionality of it was okay i would just um i would just 
reduce the size of, of the illustrations because it always takes me more time. It takes like, sometimes it takes like a uh, entire day to uh, fill in the A4 um, watercolor paper like page. And I'm just desperate after that because I cannot catch up with my freelance commission work. So it's just, okay, it will be like 10, 10.10, 10, um, like, like a square illustration of 10, of 10 centimeters or something nearby. And that will make, give me some functional constraint on, I cannot just do whatever and however long. I just have to plan it uh, while sketching really, really um, completely in advance and I have to solve everything except the, let's say, line width and the line quality. I have to figure out with the, uh, the concept uh, mainly because there is not much space to work on and it will look more effective when it's made a little bit smaller as a sticker, which is also very functional. So as for tools and functionality, I just use some notebook I got as a merch from some great exhibition of my um, veteran, wonderful colleague. And uh, it's like copy paper, that's the quality. And functionality was it was small and I just used one Faber Castell silver wooden pencil, wooden like color pencil but it's silver uh a jumbo one uh, and uh, that makes me uh see the um, see the drawing but it, it doesn't disturb inking at all i can just see how how heavy i am going on to and the lines like from like b pencil doesn't dist distract me like i'm doing a good job and then when i raise i see it's poor or just over over inked or something so it was very light yet it was i was able to see it it, it uh, definitely it definitely uh made a problem when i was under certain angle with that uh silver thing because i couldn't really see sometimes i needed to turn uh, around the light so it doesn't bother and sometimes it it, sh it was shining through the ink when i gave a little bit more layers of the when i wanted to confirm some shape or i was searching for the sh sh right shape uh, within the illustration i was just um, within the design it just stays a lot and shines through the ink so when i raised it i I had to repeat just rarely, but to repeat the, repeat the black over some parts. So that was number one, tools and functionality. Yet longer, as always, uh, I think I could tell about it shortly, but it, I think it's really important, you know. As Jake Berger says, constraints, that's very important, and it can be... Um, it can be a constraint of any kind if it helps you uh, achieve the goal finishing the October or trying to finish the October. So it's really good. Number two, planning and thinking um, before starting the, 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 the 31 drawings. I was like, okay, how fast I am, how functional I am, how spontaneous I am when I'm inking. I'm inking like for for money, like commercial project commissions. I'm trying to implement inking in whatever I do for money. Okay, so I'm like inking f like forever, and it's not really uh, that much of. I always uh, try to learn myself to be functional within time frames. So planning of how to do it. Um, turn me into uh, like inking machine <laughs> in a way it doesn't mean it's beautiful every time it's just functional I can just put my hand down on um, like digital inking on the, 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 the screen of my pen computer and I can just do it without uh, any hesitation or thinking before uh, putting any line on the into the scene so I, I'm pretty functional fast and practical when it comes to that I'm always like have I have a ticking clock 
in my brain because I always work for less money than other illustrators. And for that sake, I have to work a little bit much more hours than than other lucky illustrators who are well paid and were paid what they worth for their. So I always optimize time with the quality. I'm not proud of that, but that's that can just come in handy when you have to survive from being freelance illustrator. At some point, I have to break into quality more than, f you know, functional timing and being always in a rush. But uh, when it comes to number two, uh, a section I want to talk about, and it's planning and thinking and what I'm talking about right now, I just um, plan that I want to make like 15, 20 minutes ink. Or if I if I already have a nice idea, I I just I was just thinking, okay, let's do thirty one place or thirty places where I traveled uh, to and that I have nice impressions of, and that I can show in some interesting decorative or funny way, and uh, I will constrain myself to not using that much expression of on uh, birds' faces because everything is with birds. I can. And I love that old Charlie Brown, like uh, Jim Davis or um, all, all uh, other uh, uh, like daily stripe, uh, uh, stripe daily comics from 70s, 80s. And uh, just how simple and, and for me, how perfect they are. Although they're done fastly, they just have that essence or everything needed. So I, I thought, okay... Let's just uh, uh, do s simplify the face. I mean, if I can, if I can make an expression without doing the detailed eyes, and let's let's be realistic. The the, the paper size is already small, the canvas size. So uh, whatever you do, you just sometimes overwrite, and it just looks like overdone, and it pulls out from the concept and from the idea that you want to portray. So. It's it was um it was interesting. I tried for the first time being like two dots, you know, like more kawaii, but I still use the mouth and, and the movement of the body of the birds and the wings and whatever uh attributes I add to um show my impressions of that city of the town that I've been to. So travel inspired Inktober indeed. Um, I still managed to do something travel inspired, although it's not a serious project in ink. So thinking uh, before I started really helped me about being faster, let's say more efficient with sketching each and every place with it, um, and uh, for that vignette to uh, just one small illustration to represent my impression of the entire place that can be like 2 million, <laughs> 2 million people um, uh, city or just um, some super small place but with so many uh, diversity in itself and its essence. And I just said to myself, okay, here I already have ideas. Let's let's just put them on the paper. Let's just and before that, uh, the planning was which places I will pick for thirty, and thirty one will be some kind of a cover illustration, like vignette that will be like for, for the front page. So I just um, first planned which places that will be, and then I sketched the lettering the letters that I made also like handwritten lettering um, with my I, I kind of invented some kind of decorative font to go with my ink illustrations longer time ago when I was a student so I kind of using something like like that today on my uh, branded stuff and I, I'm really proud each time when I'm practicing to do something some let lettering some calligraphy uh by hand and not using fonts because it always it brings something it adds adds up something to the quality of entire thing and uh, because I, as I feel that you can find font fonts uh, that are already done by other people that are matching your illustration but for in when I look at that it will be so rare 
um, that that's the case. I just don't find it compatible. I love illustrated books w for small kids where illustrator is writing the, 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 the manuscript on the double page. It's just something, it gives so much uh, more quality to, to the entire thing. So I realized which uh, cities and towns that will be, mostly like urban place, but not all of them. And then uh, it's mostly Europe because I'm from Europe. Uh, it was <laughs> most logical to, to, to go somewhere closer first, right? So, um, and then, um, where was I? Uh, and then um, uh, hand lettering all of that. And I uh, filmed that for this video as well because I thought it was interesting to make even that in planning. It's so, it was so fast much faster i was impressed uh because i'm always chasing time i was i told you previously um you know, i was impressed when i'm focused on just one thing at a time which i'm i'm very messy and chaotic and i suppose any kind of creative person has that thing that to think about like more compulsively about what he's drawing inking or painting but when I do one step at a time on this just small uh, notebook uh, the dimensions, it's just, okay, let's just do the uh, sketching the lettering, then inking the lettering. And it came up much easier because you're focused only on lettering at the moment. You're just not looking at the lettering while you're inking the figure above, like the bird. No, you're just doing that. So it came up much quicker and let's say much nicer than I thought I would do the lettering because I suck at that. And uh, okay, so I think that will be all for planning and thinking. I think that will be uh, pretty much that. Number three, how to start. Um, that had a lot with number one and two, but let's say when I, when I would advise you or anyone watching or anyone asking me um like per, in, in in person how to start on october i would say let's just think about yourself how do you feel this october what challenges you the most what is something that you're driven for accomplishing in october are you just aiming for more followers which should not be the case i i mean that's it's just not a good motive to start something like that so um Whatever your goal is, you have, you have to be creative and be, let's optimize the time you have and give the best quality and ideas implemented in that project. It's a small project, let's say, even if it's just random following the prompts or uh, making your, even, even uh, how to start, make your own prompts. Like I've seen illustrators on Instagram and YouTube make make their own prompts, like prepare three months in advance with trying all other um, new art supplies they uh, might be potentially be inspired by and just make something totally new. You can start months before, but try not to make a um, like for next year. This year is already <laughs> done. Like, but for any challenge. You can start like months before, you can think about it months before, um, you can write down the ideas that can be done not only for October, but everything you write down inspired by challenges like October can be spread out all through the year or two or three times or quarterly. It's just wonderful um, uh, to um, think about how to start because you will come up with many co different concepts, I believe. Or uh, you will find out what do you uh, want to work on the most. What's what makes you driven and creative and yeah, definitely. Um, how to start is really broad subject, but I would say start with what excites you the most. That will be the first point. Like like start from the top of the mountain and then realize what's in the bottom. I think that's that's how to start thinking and uh, um, how to start any challenge. Okay, let's like start. What what's your high pitch? What's 
what's the best if you're a singer what's the highest note you can you can put out of your um throat and uh your voice where is the highest pitch and if it sounds good uh in your head if you can imagine that high highest tone you can produce it's the most probably is uh if in if you're any kind of artist that you can achieve that if you can imagine it in your head before singing um and that's the same with drawing it, I believe, with um with any kind of art. Uh, so that was number three. Number four, improve on the go. Over um the preparation period and uh, let's say thinking uh like creative part of the process before really starting doing it on the paper, you might want to stay mentally active and um if that not gives you no pressure but makes some kind of uh, freedom while thinking about it i mean for me it was just um i i felt so much more free when i realized i can uh, get with my expectations even lower and do the small contribution and just do it you know it was so re- such a relief so Whatever uh, improve can be, it can be uh, be a more um, be more motivated, more involved into challenge, or be less time uh, less involved time wise, or just try to do something very fast, or try to do something very catchy and trendy. Whatever, improve on the go before you really start on October first. Uh, and by writing everything down and try to combine all your ideas into the best one, the one that gives you uh, like a l- largest wings a- ever for that year or for that challenge. That's how I think about number four. And uh, number five is enjoying. So without any kind of en- enjoyment is in all that, I don't really think that's um, working very well for anyone my first October was hell. I talked about it in my previous October um, uh, cover all uh, covering video. Um, like, if it doesn't make you enjoy at all, maybe you will definitely learn something from it. But if there is no element of enjoying the process, I I don't really, I don't really think. Uh, I should co- continue doing it during October. Endurance is a big quality, but then you probably missed something during um, preparing, uh, picking up, up your tools, uh, planning, uh, thinking about how to start, or you didn't improve your ideas uh, even during the challenge. So enjoying element is always missing when you didn't, uh, do the up uh, the something from the four above uh sections above well so you didn't please yourself enough or or uh, challenge yourself enough uh, because challenge equals enjoyment it's not easy but it, it's just like for me something challenges uh, that challenges me is enjoyable in many ways so that will be number five um Number six, um, my final thoughts and corrections. I think um, I was just so, as I said, I was very driven. I uh, I did for one night, like entire night, uh, when I was first feeling like not having high temperature and the, some medicine really worked or whatever. I was feeling a little bit better. I just wanted to warm up for my commission work and try to pull few, uh, put few lines on, uh, on sketch something and ink something just to start, and I ended up nine hours later having like sixteen, seventeen vignettes done, and that that was after I did all the hand lettering I mentioned. So it was not everything was sketched something was super rough like only idea placed like not even general composition some were just imagined before and i just did them but first night and i ended up like with 16 uh done in ink i mean that was 
that was crazy. Um, so yeah, I never, I never experienced that. I just, I can do a lot in a short amount of time, but if it's something personal, I usually have a lot of a blocking and uh, like self destructive um, uh, time in between. I just procrastinate a lot. So this was like big warm up with a big result. And then I realized all the other sections above like now, now let's say five sections were finally coming into place since I could really work and not even think. I was just enjoying. That was all. So I planned it well. I knew how to start. I constrained myself with tools and functionality and I improved on the go as I was finishing my sketches and started to ink right away. I just knew what I wanted to do. It's so enlightening and revealing. <laughs> so I kind of com made my possibilities and my condition, health condition, compatible with the time I had. I didn't have time at all. So I wanted to do it like in one breath or let I don't know how to say it in English. I hope that's the right term. Um the right way to say say what I want to say. So um final thoughts. I enjoyed it. Some of the cities were less inspiring. Some um, were just, uh, let's say, visited more briefly. Like I stayed in Paris for two months. I could really uh, feel the place. But I, I, I was impressed with how I portrayed Paris. I was just like confident that I could say I, I knew the city well enough. While I cannot say that for like... The cities, they were super small, but I visited, visited them only for two days. Yet, uh, traveling is not only about be being completely detailed and uh, being like super familiar with what you're drawing. It's just my personal uh, impression uh, just transferred into ink drawing. And I wanted to... Um, my final thoughts uh, were, okay, I still made some kind of variety with portraits. I didn't do all, like, two dots were eyes. No, I just ended up doing as, um, as I want from piece to piece. And I made, again, I <laughs> wasn't consistent enough with those constraints. But I've, I felt there is much more to show through sometimes through expression of the bird bird on, on on its face than like with the background and uh, it, I, it was just needed so I gave myself um, enjoyable amount of freedom and yet I was still very effective uh, I finished it in like 15 or 16 hours in total I think and spread over like three days okay corrections i didn't make many corrections i think uh when i made fo photos of it i also uh using my canon m50 i made the first like photos ever um not using my scanner and i said okay i would just um i would just use adobe illustrator or trace i will make custom trace um a model that I will use for all of them because they're all the same size and the lines were similar in uh, like quality and width so it could be like one trace model for everything like threshold and all that and I did it and it was a nice experience because scanning is so much more painful and you still have to do the leveling and um, uh, like let's say preparing image in Photoshop with contrasts and levels and all that before uh, tracing in Adobe Illustrator and getting a nice vector that you can use with any size and that looks good in printing. Um, yet, yeah, I wanted to stay as textured as possible. And that leads us to number seven, which is turning Inktober um, inks that I did in my small notebook into product. I really, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I was, again, so driven that that didn't really, um, it wasn't enough for me um, 
I wanted to print it. I wanted to, I wanted to make like printed notebook just to color them um super um simple again like um a younger generations could be fam more familiar with uh, like peanuts movie uh like old comic style or garfield or something like that i wanted to use super simple style with a refined secondary or primary color palettes or playing with it and uh just print it as um as a small zine booklet whatever because i had the front page that is like the cover um maybe adding some information inside outside whatever and then i said why i said i said to myself these will be stickers why would i do a book um whatever let's make a sticker book uh, i didn't see them ever like i saw happy planner doing some very functional planner sticker book uh with all the familiar fonts uh that everybody uses with uh, i mean they're it's a lovely design and it's a hard work to do even that but this is like unique uh inktober project it's very spontaneous it looks nice when it's small because it's already designed on on a small dimensions as from the very very start so I can do it even smaller, like two on one page, and let's play with it. But I, I didn't really feel like I had the energy. I was still re recovering. Uh, my health condition was not so well, but I still had the nerve, you know. And then I said to myself, okay, I will just, uh, I will just beg my boyfriend to help me with color coloring, like half a half. He did fifteen, I did fifteen, and literally one night night and that night while i was preparing them he was he started coloring them uh with the with the colors i gave him as color scheme for each each and every or almost every i'm not sure um he's also very good at that um and uh then like okay let's do the what what do i have in my in my studio as as tools, I have Epson Pro series printer uh, for larger formats than A4. Okay, I don't want it to be big. I uh, and that's the printer I print my um, my stickers on. Then and I cut them on CreCut Explorer too. I have laser machine, the Chinese non brand and s like slow one. But let's 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 see what I can do. Okay, then I need something metally. Then I need this. Then I need to make it into a book. How do I do it? And I learned something from my colleagues on Academy. We needed to do something like making a hardcover book uh, entirely and uh, stitching all that. I, I I wasn't sure if I had the nerve to do it. So I said, okay, let's make like, like confetti type of a sticker book, which you can just use, um, like take off and just use some... Um, Let's say I don't know. Use something to connect that on three uh, confetti, uh, confetti holes. But what do I do with the cover? Okay, I have some plywood. I have this. I have that. And then it came to me. Okay, let's just not do everything as print, like printing on paper or doing hard cover. Let's just make my covers on plywood. Make the holes. Uh, to fit in uh, and go over so the sticker book doesn't um, ruin, the, the, you know, the paper. Let's just go slightly over it and blah, blah, blah. So you will see that in a video so I don't have to really talk much about it. You will see it uh, while you're uh, listening to this. But it came up really spontaneously and I didn't really uh, prepare that as much. I was just trying to be concentrated to prepare everything well as it's a like a long there is a number that you have to go over and each and every to be nicely traced nicely placed onto some kind of template for printing and cutting and the laser machine preparation of that you know the cover uh, um cover what what it has to be on the cover that's my logo and instagram account and blah 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 and i decided very quickly what i wanted to do the night when I went to sleep and finished all those inks and I had six, seven inks for next morning. And I said, okay, let's just finish that and then do all the, it, it was just so spontaneous and driven. I couldn't believe myself. 
And I just wanted to see the result. I said, Buen, will you, will, will you just do it on a laser machine? Just start it. I want to see it happen. I want to see it all together, how it looks. If it sucks, I will not publish it. I will not show it to anyone. I just wanted to see myself. If this has any sense, because I never saw something like this. Like this. And the handmade in some kind of small studio like this. And it came up nicely. I, I, I'm really satisfied because I used premium glossy photo sticker paper. I didn't use the mate one, like label making one, like standard one. Although I, I find it much more um, durable. Um, I just used the fancy one. Um I think it gave something to it. I put some texture onto stickers, like a canvas textures, just to break down the 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 the. Um, uh, just it doesn't look like a. I use the fill bucket all the time. I just needed something to break down with uh, all the consistency with a slight of texture, and I think it did, it doesn't look bad. I just made a lot of decisions in a short amount amount of time. And I wasn't disappointed, which is very rare. Um, and then I just said, okay, let's just print and cut. And then I had to, after everything is colored, I had to prepare everything for printing and cutting. And it was just like eight papers, A4, um, with different, um, different designs. Uh, and then all of them for cutting. Um, you can see my video that I just hack the Cricut Design Space software because I really do not appreciate how it rings the resolution and the quality of my print. Because if I invest in a good printer, I just don't want some online browser software to ruin all my hard work and a good resolution file because it has to swallow it and then print and cut it. It just didn't work for me. So I kind of hacked the machine. Um, and uh, I will show you who uh, who uh, displayed that method on YouTube. I will leave the link with the video. I love that guy. He makes also very nice uh, stickers. Um, so yeah, turning it into a product was interesting. It was uh, some kind of a short process uh, when it comes to what I expected, but still it was very tiring. It was impulsive. And uh, it ended up well. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, the eight, number eight of all of these sections. Let me just repeat all the Inktober guide sections I had so far. So, number one is tools and functionality. Number two is planning and thinking. Number three is how to start. Number four is improve on the go. Number five is enjoying the process. And number six is... um. Final thoughts and corrections that I just talked about my process. But you can apply this onto any challenge or any uh, series of drawings. I think all this entire video is telling, uh, hopefully, telling you something constructive about how to approach anything you do in a series. As a uh, drawing series, uh, entire children's book, which definitely... Needs planning, needs thinking before starting. That's definitely something I will um, talk about in my next video specifically for uh, books for children, the, the illustration for children's books. And then seven, turning it into a product. Um, what I want to add uh, at the end in the section eight, the sum, like summing the situation and summing uh, what I experienced this, this year is if you push yourself uh, and you're passionate enough about what you came up as a concept, as an idea, although it's totally insignificant to the Inktober community until all the master artists there, it, it will be enjoyable. It will be something that, that makes you stay awake or uh, work even if you don't feel well like I did. Um, that's, that's the main summary and main, uh, main, main thought of mine. And I will definitely encourage you to, um, do, do something that has, uh, some sort of structure. And, uh, if these sections that I made by myself help you to guide you through this October video, maybe it can help you guide you through your other 
challenges that you uh, give yourself or any other official ones. So um, also what I want to add is um, like for the end of the video, I, I'm not really sure this is already a long video, but uh, the summary is I ended up with a product where I I really I already have a lot of listings on Etsy. I did a campaign this like since the last November. I'm just so working on my Etsy shop. Even I did so many mistakes. I did this and that, and I just um, sometimes um, did wonderful thing that nobody likes. But I liked it, or I just did something like so e that is so easy for me, and people, people actually react on that design, like they like it. Um, sometimes it's both. Like I enjoy the process, and I like the design, and other people like it. But it's not really common for my Etsy shop. Um, there is not much sales. I just had to have to focus on my commission work to earn money to go to Japan to have enough so I don't shake like f be uh full of fear when I go there if if something happens that involves extra expenses that are that, that are just not planned planned um um you know beforehand but um and I just came up with something that is interesting to turn into product and I don't care if I spend the time because I just did it like uh, like a bullet a bullet train, you know. I was fast and uh, I was efficient. My boyfriend helped me with uh, with uh, within moments when uh, where I didn't feel like I have enough energy to do it on my own, and where he doesn't hurt anything of my originality or whatever I want to achieve. It was just a technical sort of help, but it it was help. And it made me see it through the end much faster than I thought. And I just let it happen. I, I just let it. And I think uh, the, the summary for this video would be um, you, uh, you have to uh, see this through. And if you can come up easily after you are uh, inspired and do some ink drawings, how to make them into product, that's fine. It doesn't work for me. Uh, I was thinking about sticker book. I was thinking about small book. And uh, I just wanted to have something something to contribute, small, but to give the contribution on my Instagram and whatever. But it, it, it was planned to be some sort of product uh, from the beginning. And I think that helped when it had to be uh, made into product and executed in a short time, I j all of that pre preparing and thinking uh, before starting made me finally do something that is that I had a control over it. If if you're too fluid and you want to make a product at the end, it might happen to you. But for me, it's definitely not the case. I'm not the kind of person that can. Uh, I can be spontaneous, but it has a price tag on it. I can either hard and heavy get to that point where I turn it into product or just give up because it wasn't just concept wasn't practical enough to, to, to be made into product. So I highly recommend you uh, that you watch uh, if you want, that you listen and watch the older uh, Jake Parker's uh, videos um, regarding October because uh, I think uh, while I think I watched some something like turning project into product or you don't need a project you need a product video uh, I think I, I listened to that over 10 times and it kind of programs you in a right way I think Jake Parker has so many um good um thoughts that he put into his career into his uh work and his workflow and uh, he is really practical when it comes to how to think about being a, a freelance artist or uh, how to approach an day-to-day -day, um life as a freelance artist so i highly recommend 
that beside this that you <laughs> stumbled upon, you just go there if you didn't already and just just listen to all of his videos there. <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah, thanks for watching. And in case you like the footage and you like the process, let me know in the comments below. Or if you li just like the video um, in, in any way, I would love to have a thumbs up because that makes me <laughs> feel like I'm doing something right. Um, if you have any constructive criticism, I'm always uh, 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 loving to get something like that. If it's the videos are too long or too short or if I'm too boring, whatever. It's just, it's so helpful. So please let me know. And uh, if you have any questions, leave that in the comments. I will answer each and every one of them. And uh, in... Any, if in any case you like the sticker book, I would just, I landed page on coffee. If you don't know, I will link to, leave the link below for funding the money to make 50 copies. If not, I have a listing on my Etsy shop that says uh, that is made to order list kind of listing. And if you purchase that, then I start making it and it takes me one day because I have everything prepared and I have the plywood and I have the paper. So uh, let me know if you're interested in something like that. Let me know on Etsy um, if you really want to purchase it and help me um, make more projects like this and more products like this. And I think it will stay limited. I think just like... I will I would love to stay within 50 copies because there is no point in doing more than that. What do you think? Um it's just something that can help me fund my other projects or make more plush toys, just or just enjoy sharing all these um impressions on my of uh my travel experiences with some of you who love to travel and who kind of liked what I did this year. So whatever is that you feel or decide or you're uh, possible to uh, to make, either like, comment. Um, if you like my videos, please subscribe. I'm so into doing all these YouTube videos and sometimes I'm not down. I'm not quitting, but I just need some kind of... Um, good uh, motivation from the audience because YouTube just exists because of you guys who are watching or um, needing s someone who is a little bit um, in front of you or behind you to give some kind of opinion on these topics. And uh, I just want to do something that uh, makes you driven and creative so any kind of uh, motivation is really, really helpful. Um, I love you all. I just wanted to say Inktober is uh, something that makes us all being together in the same trouble or in the same wonderful situation. And I'm just sending you all my love and wish you that you're already uh, successful in uh, what you're doing. And if you're on the very start, like I was 10 years ago, that you're just driven enough, motiv motivated enough and focused enough and never quitting. That's that's the all uh, that's all about art because it's hard to be an artist. And if you're not pushing uh, really hard and trying um, trying everything to be where you are um today and in 10 years and for like for for life um existentially and financially and in every other way uh possible it's it's hard to happen and it's like for everything but art is something uh that is very fluid and based on like or dislike it's just not fair <laughs> to be an artist <laughs> but we want to be so, yeah, good luck with all that and let me know in the comments what you think. So, thank you so much for listening to all this so far. Bye-bye! <laughs>